Welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Lens. This is Jake along with Scott, and we've traveled to Norton Commons, which is a city inside of a bigger city uh, of Louisville, and uh, we have landed at Watch Hill proper, and we're excited to talk all things bourbon, whiskey, and, and what it like what it's like to create a bourbon and whiskey club, but it's not a club. Come enjoy drinks and dinner, and we're joined today by Josh Howes and Tommy Craggs to talk everything Watch Hill proper, so sit back and tune in to this episode of The Bourbon Lens. Josh, Tommy, how's it going, guys? Good, man. Excellent. Glad glad to see you. Glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. It, it, long time coming. Um, we were just reminiscing before we started. Uh, we first got to step foot on this property uh, for a dinner with Five Trail and uh, have been itching to come back ever since. So appreciate you all hosting us. Oh, yeah. Glad Absolutely. to have you. Yeah. Uh, beautiful space, right? Yeah. And uh, not just beautiful because it's a nice space. There's beautiful bottles of whiskey everywhere there's <laughs> art on the walls yeah, it's, yeah. And barrels barrels yeah yeah so you know let's let's just jump into to really the crux of the question because i don't i don't know the backstory at all so whichever one of you all want to take it how did this come about so josh is an engineer by trade owns a an engineering firm here in louisville i was at heaven hill josh and i had known each other because we were bleacher dads our kids played baseball, so uh, we knew each other before, but we would see each other at the games, and um, we would talk bourbon, and uh, Josh got the itch. I've been in the industry quite a while. Josh got the itch and just absorbed everything about this industry, and really really wanted to see if we, if we could find a way or if he could find a way to kind of jump in, and so I think at some point he had asked me, has there ever been an idea that I had thought never pursued? Uh, long story short, you know, we thought about maybe doing something for social media groups where we buy a house and make it very bourbon whiskey centric and we would gut it and make it really nice to where we could rent it out to these local groups. Uh, they would come and then we would clean it up and then the next group the next week. That idea lasted about 12 seconds. <laughs> uh, we went and looked at one spot uh, that we mentioned earlier. Uh, it, and we ended up in Norton Commons and, you know, kind of made a turn onto the street that's in front of our building. Um, girl walked in front of us and we said, what do you know about this building? And she basically said, I know everything about this building. I'm the agent on it. And so we <laughs> got some drywall buckets. It was just a white shell, uh, gravel floors, got some drywall buckets, sat down, kind of told her the idea that we had. She took it to her boss. Uh, it took them about 20 minutes to say, there's absolutely no way that I would ever want to put something like that on this property. <laughs> uh, so we, you know, kind of thought, oh, well, Josh uh, wrote a business proposal. So the developer, uh, Mr. Osborne, had been in this business probably 50 years of developing properties. Uh, this was what I was told directly. He said, it's the best business proposal that I've ever read. Uh, and so he said, let's talk. And we we did a virtual meeting. Everything was virtual back then. Yeah. What a great time to, uh, to start a bar, uh, November of 2020. Yeah, no kidding. So, uh, you know, it, the business proposal was was a hit, and it got our foot in the door. Uh, and so that's kind of how it started. And, you know, I always say that if you ask Josh and I then, or even into 21, into late 21, if this is what we thought we were going to get, absolutely not. Mm. It is a lot more grandiose. It's – but – we couldn't be more proud of it. I mean, because for one, we we had we were had our hands on every detail, yeah. which was very cool. So neither one of us are design experts. We knew what we liked. We knew the colors that we liked. We knew the feel that we wanted to have: oversized leather couches, oversized leather chairs. Um, and so, you know, we were able to pull that off. And you know, like I mentioned to you earlier, and I'll let Josh expand on this. There were really two things that were. Big, big deals for us. Number one, Michael Crouch, you know, getting him and uh, thinking about when we first thought we didn't know if we were going to do food. If we did, we'd be in a warming kitchen where we would serve charcuterie and tuna fish sandwiches or something. I don't know even what we would serve. And so getting Michael was a plus and getting Carla Green. Carla Green is one of the best mixologists in the country. Uh, you know, uh, she's no longer with us, but she left our staff really prepared. And our people who are leading us now are, have just taken it uh, to another level. And so our staff is just, it's been so important to, you know, if you want to have a place like this, we're the largest American whiskey bar in the world. And to make that claim. And when people come in here, we want them to feel like when they walk in, it's like seeing the ocean for the first time. They're like, holy, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so 
uh, that that's kind of what our goal was. You know, whether we're there, we we're learning every day, man. For sure, <laughs> they come so, in the they come in the front door. We've got the bar up front, the, the smaller bar oh, up yeah. front, and they all just like are wow, this is amazing. It's like guys, <laughs> this is. That's like, mini me. Yeah, That's this mini is me. mini me. Like you need to come in a little further and check the rest of it out, and then it's just like then it's like seeing the ocean for the first time. Mm. Then it's like, oh my goodness, how many how many yeah. whiskeys uh, are available at any given time? So right now we're we're approaching two thousand. We're like nineteen hundred and seventy something right now. So Gotta we're get those numbers up. Yeah, yeah. No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> another another month or two. So I'd say by like March of twenty twenty four. Will be at over two thousand, and that's a unique expression. Yeah, yeah. different bottles. Yeah, because uh, you're gonna have backups of your. Of oh your yeah, we probably got three or four thousand bottles oh, in the enough. house. Yeah. yeah, but as far as unique, yeah. from a from a you know customer perspective, what's what's the most common you know like pours? Like, are they looking for like the major brands, or do is there like anything specific that kind of stick out? sticks out to you all that people kind of come in seeking outside of Blanton's. We don't want to be that people <laughs> that talk about Blanton's, uh, but I just talked about Blanton's. So I'm the guy I just, just curious. Cause I think that's interesting when you got so many different skews, is there anything like a common I, thread? I do think that we have a lot of check it off the bucket list pours yeah. and we, we do have people who come in and, you know, we do have a membership element to this club for sure. And so we have members and, and non-members alike that will bring in and, and check off what they have uh, on a particular day. And they kind of make their way. I, you know, I don't know if anybody will ever make it through the 2000. If, yeah. if they do, you know, good luck. They're a hell of a customer. <laughs> they might be one of the owners. <laughs> they, they could be, but you know, I don't think so. I think obviously Weller Blanton's, those types tend to sell more than the others mm -hmm. on, you know, if you strung a whole year's worth together, but from week to week, I don't think you really see, one dominant whiskey over another one. There's so many things to pull from. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really get, I, I see some obscure stuff come across every day. Just like <laughs> what in the world are they ordering? Like, cause um, you know, we have 2000 bottles. Some are from Alaska, some are from, you know, the middle of nowhere distilleries that nobody's heard of. And I'm like, how did, why did they order that? You know what I mean? So did they have a connection or did they, are they just Were at they that point? There? <laughs> yeah. Or are they at that point in the menu? Maybe it's a member who's just like working their way through the menu and they've hit some obscure bottle or something. Yeah. But for the most part, um, you know, we push things every week. So if we have an event here and there's a distillery, like when five trail was here, you know, we're pushing their whiskeys that week. For sure. So then that, that week they would tend to lead, you know, the charge, the yeah. charge. And then other weeks, like this week we have McTavish a uh, whiskey event tomorrow. So obviously McTavish is selling a lot of pours this week, trying, yeah. trying to get people prepared for that. So things like that. Yeah. And I tell you what, those dinners have gotten me excited. Um, I think there's a high West dinner that just happened or is yep. coming up. Just happened. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and huge high West guy. So like that was like, ah, oh, I, I need to do this. And, end up having something to do. I was like, damn it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because they're really cool people, right? Yeah. Like, and, and they have a really unique story. And I, and I love the fact that you're giving brands an opportunity to meet with the consumer member and non-member alike yeah. to, to do that. And that's kind of what our ethos is, is try to get yeah. the, the brand and the member in a conversation so that they can understand the ethos of it all. Yeah, we do that a lot. So we, we don't have it every Wednesday, but we try to have a meet and greet on Wednesdays where a distillery comes in and they're here for about an hour and a half and they let people sample their products. Uh, you don't have to like have a reservation or anything. You can just come in, talk to the distillery, sample some stuff, and then head out the door to what you got going on that night. But so we try to give every brand that asks for that opportunity a chance to do that. And uh, you know, we feel like, uh, we're a big help for like the craft distilleries, you know, so they, they don't really have that big, beautiful distillery that they can invite people to and all that. They might be a non-producing, you know, distillery. So they're, they're looking for a home or looking for a place to do a tasting or a barrel pick, you know, where they can just bring some samples and have a room or try to get their brand out to, you know, to the masses. And so our social media is, a decent size following. And so we can help them, uh, by, so if they have that event going on that Wednesday, we'll push their brand that week and that kind of thing. So I was going to say, that's probably helpful for the people that sometimes are like me where it's just choice overload Yeah, and seeing a menu with a thousand, 2000 options. You just kind of like, 
I don't even know where to start. So mm-hmm. then they kind of just default to what they know, but being introduced to brands like that, they might be willing to. See, you what's cool is, uh, is when those small producers come in and they see it on the wall. Yeah. It's just, it's a thrill for them. And it's a thrill for us because that's, that was the point, Yeah, you know, is to give these folks a chance to have, you know, I talked at ADI last year or year before and, and made a point to tell these, you know, a room full of people is like, look, we want your whiskeys. When we are finished, when we're built out, we want your whiskeys. And they just looked at me like nobody's ever <laughs> said that they want. And so it's been good. I mean, I don't know how many states are represented on there, but it's 42 yeah. or three. I mean, we have, we have close. bourbon and whiskey from 42 or 43 states. That's crazy. It, it's wild because people don't realize how many distilleries are out there and you know it's not concentrated in one place anymore. Like right. it oh, was, no. a, a, it was a lot of it was concentrated in Kentucky pre-prohibition. Right. But now it has expanded exponentially. You know, you look at places like Colorado, and then I can think of fifteen distillers off the top of my head. Yep, Colorado's right. killing it. Yeah, yeah and um, you know, I was actually uh, I went to Hawaii, and they have places out there now. Blended whiskey is a is a, a blended American whiskey is a is a different place for all types of people. Right. Uh, it was a cool fifteen dollar bottle to say that I drank whiskey. That was Hawaiian. Mm, yeah. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it, it, it's so it's so cool to see people do different and unique things. Yeah, yeah, we're big fans of Colorado. They got a ton of stuff going out. So yeah, that's um, that's a fun place. New York's another one that's killing it. Oh man. Um, with Look. all of the stuff that's going on up there. So we're, we're trying to take some road trips. We're trying to plan some road trips out. Absolutely. With, yeah. To go, to go do some barrel picks in that, in that vicinity. We did one up in journeyman up in Michigan, which oh, cool. is another out of state distillery yeah. that's doing really good stuff. And of course they're moving into Indiana with their new distillery. That's right. In Valparaiso. But so yeah, it's, they make it's, good whiskey. They, they do. do. They and there's a lot whiskey. of good whiskey being made around the country. And so like we, do feel like part of our job is to introduce people to, you know, these really good whiskeys that are being made, even though they're not, you know, the brand like, you know, Buffalo Trace has or Jim Beam or some of these other brands are pushing. It's kind of like, well, if you like this, try this, Yeah. you know, and yeah, it's going to be a little tough to find because it's a small distillery and it's out there. But a lot of the, you know, well, a lot of the liquor laws, are changing so you can order this stuff direct from you know the distilleries now and so there's there's opportunities for these small di- distilleries to develop a following even in louisville kentucky even though we're surrounded by so much whiskey i was going <laughs> to say when we started doing this podcast i thought we'd eventually run out of distilleries to talk about no, no. 260 <laughs> episodes in it's like no we still got a laundry list to, to go yeah i mean we've had a we've had a few repeat guests but i mean it's like brand after brand after brand and it's like you just discover them they follow you or you follow them or a pr person reaches out and it's all about relationships and i think that's that's what's cool about this place from what I've gotten to know is like y'all show up too, right? People are building relationships with, you know, Tommy and Josh, right? Like you, you sure. all are very well a part of it. And I think bourbon is a, is one giant community. Whiskey is one giant community. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, as, as someone comes in, it's like, you can get a small taste of, of the whiskey world. And I'll say whiskey because American whiskey is exploding. It it's, is. it's American single malt, it's rye whiskey, it's, it's everything mm-hmm. and bourbon, um, that you can get that here, which is, which is pretty cool. And you don't have to worry about other whiskeys around the world because that's a whole nother category. That's watch sure. proper too. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, we, you know, we, when we set out, we, we got on a, a plane to go to uh, some places to see if this existed. I mean, yeah. we were a little shocked that it didn't exist in the state of Kentucky. Yeah. And and so we, you know, we ended up at, uh, we went to San Fran. They had a, a place out there, Wingtip, and it was not, it, I mean, it was a nice place, but it wasn't something that we were interested in replicating. And then we went to Portland, Oregon, Multnomah Whiskey Library, yeah. uh, and it it kind of sparked something when we walked in. It was like, you know, Ed's become a friend of ours, yeah. and we tell him and he has been here a couple of times uh we blatantly stole some of his ideas i mean we just right just took them you know and he's a lot smaller than we are and he loves the fact that you know he you know we we picked his brain he was yeah. an influence for us and so it was uh it was very cool but we were just we couldn't believe that there was not something solely dedicated to american whiskey and bourbon our tagline from the start has been nothing foreign nothing clear and no beer you know, people were just like, well, you can't have a 
bar with no beer or no vodka or no or vodka. No what are you? What, you know, and and our the craftsmen that we have working behind the bar, and this is no joke, and this is something that I really hope that people come out and test us on, is that they are so good that if you order a gin and tonic, they can bring you something so close that you don't realize you're not drinking a gin and tonic. They have, they're just good. It, yeah. This place is not. Listen, I tell people all the time, this is not a really easy place to work. Uh, we, Josh and I try not to micromanage too much. We have a really good GM uh, who's very good at what he does, but we let them kind of expand and do what they do best. And, you know, I'll, I'll put our team up against anybody. Yeah, I, I, I think that's really interesting. Like the only other place that I've ever been to is um, the saloon at High West. My wife hates whiskey. That's fun. Like hates whiskey. And they made her drinks that she enjoyed. She yeah. finished two whiskey <laughs> drinks. Yeah. Never in yeah. my wildest dreams. <laughs> More than she's had in her entire life. The only other whiskey drink she likes is is a uh, uh, whiskey sour. And she's I've seen her order that like three times. <laughs> but like she drank two in one meal. Mm. Yeah, that's like awesome. Like that, that was a big time. That's cool. Um, so that, that's pretty cool. And then my other question was like, did, did Jack Rose ever play a, like a, did you ever go out to Jack I Rose did. in D.C.? Yep. Yeah. Because um, I hear that, that talked about a ton. I've never been. It's I've a, never been. Well, there, yeah. I mean, it's it's a beautiful bar. That the so it's but it's set up more like a restaurant. They have the bar downstairs, uh, which has you know basically three hundred sixty degrees of whiskey all the way around you, and yeah. it's it's a, it's kind of a daunting. You know, they have more bottles than we do, but of course they have scotches and different things like that. But um, once you get upstairs, you're kind of just in a regular restaurant. You Got know it. what I mean? So it's not really all around you all the time. Mm -hmm. So we. Whereas Multnomah is, that was kind of like, once you walk into Multnomah, it's one room and it's a massive wall of whiskey and you're just kind of in there with everybody. Um, and their concept's a little bit different than ours. But from that standpoint, Jack, we wanted, we looked at Jack Rose as kind of like the king of the hill. Yeah. You know, like everybody knows Jack Rose, mm -hmm. like everybody knows that that's the whiskey like Mecca, yeah. you know? And so we said, let's go after them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? They yeah, yeah. need, they need competition for sure. Yeah. And did so, you, did you ever look at like the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society or anything like from an international perspective too, that have done some, some really unique things? Mm -mm. Not really. No. Yeah. yeah. We're not big fans of Scotch and malt. And yeah. Like and that. we, we hear about it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with people let us know. They just can't believe that we won't. But the big one was beer. People just, they thought that we would cave, you know, it's like, Oh, Hey, you know it's what? Like, that people don't realize from a build-out perspective, having beer lines ain't cheap. It's, it's not cheap. No, and not having to do those is like, yes, yeah, well, at least we're saving some money on they're something. They're messy. I have been in that industry before. They're messy. They, you know, so they you bust just, a tap, you know, all yeah. of a sudden it's just like, yeah, yeah. They just you know, and the other thing, though, like part of it is because we wanted to celebrate Kentucky. We wanted to celebrate bourbon, and so we – we really kind of expanded from like we were thinking, let's just only do bourbon. So then we were like, we'll, we can do American whiskey and celebrate all the great American whiskeys that, you know, because American malt, single malt kind of gives us an opportunity to, to play to the Scotch people and uh, the rye, you know, that's, that's a big category. So did, we didn't want to exclude those, but we did want to celebrate Kentucky and what we're doing here locally. Yep. So that's why we're here. Um, but I think where I was going with that was that it also helps our staff, though, because when you start saying, well, you have to learn all of the cocktails that have to do with Facts. vodka, <laughs> tequila. So our staff can just focus, right? Just focus on American whiskey and those cocktails and those brands. Like we have, you know, I don't know how many brands, two or three hundred brands that they have to learn mm -hmm. you know and so it's like just to try to make it a little bit easier for the staff to not have to have a knowledge of every spirit and every brand you know it just simplified things for us to say we're just going to focus on american whiskey and try to be experts in that area and do one thing and do it really really well and plus they had to learn michael crouch's menu which yeah <laughs> that can be a daunting test too. yeah well, speaking of, right, so it's, it's not just whiskey here. Whiskey is literally all around you because there's barrels floating in the air that are securely up there. I promise you guys, gonna, <laughs> don't be scared. Um, but, you know, adding that kitchen, you said that was one of kind of your secret su successes right from the beginning. You know, what's it like for, you know, you all to have not just an amazing whiskey collection, but also to have, you know, a really well-known and respected chef that can, can pair the unique flavors of, of bourbon and whiskey with, with food? 
I'll take it. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you can go. <laughs> I think it's a challenge for both of us and for Michael. I think, uh, you know, Michael wants to do more than he's able to do here in some I think at some level, because we are, after all, we're a whiskey bar. And so he has to kind of think in those terms, you know, we can't, I mean, he's, he's French, he's classically French trained chef, right? If you've ever been to a French restaurant, it's very fancy. It's very, um, I mean, there's a lot of words that I don't understand (laughs) a lot of food that I've never even heard of before. And so, there's a, you know, we kind of push that boundary a little bit with being somewhat of a gourmet, you know, place to eat fine dining. He wants to call it, he doesn't like fine dining. He likes to call it elevated Elevated. food. So we call it elevated food. And so I think for him, it's challenging to try to make it, um, you know, kind of simplify some things. But then on our side, it's also like, you know, we want burgers and fries and chicken wings from a bar standpoint, but then also, that doesn't really fit the vibe here either, Yeah, you know, because this is kind of a higher end. It's a, it's a great date night. It's a special occasion place. And so his food really does fit, I think what we're doing for sure. And so that's why we originally, when we were kind of talking to Michael about coming on board at the very beginning, he was, he's been with us since we opened. And so it was kind of like, is this going to work? You know? And I think we both decided that it would work. And so far it's, it's going pretty well. It's, but we do have our challenges all the time from, we do. And, you know, just from him being very creative, which is fantastic, but then also like bringing it back to kind of like, it's a, but it's a bar, yeah. you know? <laughs> so there's the, you know, there's that competition a little bit. When the kitchen, when, when I, we had Michael in for the first time we were meeting, uh, he walked back to the kitchen area and he's like, you know, where's the rest of it? Yeah. It's and so we, we were remodeling before we were even open. Yeah. I you know, more room be, to play. Well, it did. just, and, and it's, it's still too small. It's still small. And we hear about it and, you know, <laughs> uh, they get it. They, they want to put out the best food th- that they can. And so, uh, we, it, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do, kind of landlocked a little bit. So, yeah. but, you know, they they're, they still do just a fantastic job. Can't say enough about well, it. Anybody that cooks always could use more room. So. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Damn. I always want a bigger kitchen. Um, and this is the first place I've ever, I have ever had tartare. Right. Oh. And it was delightful. Right. Do you have the steak or the tuna? The steak. Yeah. They're both good. Well, it's- <laughs> tuna, tuna would have swollen me up like a balloon because I'm allergic. So I'm glad oh, I didn't have yeah. tuna. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. no, he, yeah. I, and it's challenge. It's, I mean, his food has actually broadened my horizons a little Me bit, too. you know, from that For standpoint sure. of just being able to taste new things that I've not used to eating on a regular basis. And then him him kind of keeping one eye on the fact that it's going to get paired with a whiskey or a wine and kind of doing a really good job of, you know, getting our staff educated to what's going to work well with his food and, and yeah. those types of things. Does, so Does he also work with the cocktail program and incorporate any mm-hmm. of that? Not really. No. Okay. They they work in conjunction sometimes when we have events. They may he may work with, you know, pairing a whiskey or a cocktail that he may have done in the past or he knows that it would fit well, but no, he doesn't. Yeah. He got his hands full back there. Yeah. Yeah. We have actually different we have uh basically four programs here that we call it. We have uh the food program, you know, our menu our food menu, then we have the whiskey, we have the wine, and we have cocktails. So we kind of have four different leaders for each, you know, one for each of those things. So Michael leads the food, Chris leads the wine, um, Ashley and Tom lead the cocktails, and then basically I lead the whiskey to a degree. It's me and Tommy kind of tag team that. Tommy does all the tastings for the most part of the, you know, or at least not so much anymore. But Tommy used, to, when we started, Tommy did all the tastings and I kind of kept track of the inventory. and yeah. that. So we basically have four different things and you're responsible for your lane, <laughs> yeah. you know, and doing that thing, so... It's good to stay in your lane. It is. Right? <laughs> Our tastings are fun, man. We do them on. We do a really cool one on Saturday. That's just. It's cool. We have a staff member that does it along with them. So th- we have another RGM. Chris knows what the whiskeys are. Yeah. Our staff member, who's he's got a really good palate, and but he he leads along with them, but he doesn't know what they are, and mm. so he's kind of guiding them. And to just I mean, when the guessing game starts, it's just really cool. It's become it's very fun. popular. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Blind tastings are extremely hard, um, and they're not. Way to taste whiskey. They're, they're not. Be, absolutely. They're not for the faint of heart. They're not. 
Well, but we, it, from to your point, it is the best way to taste whiskey because if you're trying to learn how to taste whiskey, you get rid of the label. You know, you get rid of the preconceived notion of what it's going to taste like and you can just taste it for what it is and try to pick out those notes. And so it's, it's worked really, really well. This is a barrel pick of ours. Yeah, well, this is too. Yeah. The first one was our yearless barrel pick. My, my favorite thing to do is to like, flight people on weeded bourbons mm-hmm. and like give them like a <laughs> like a really well known one that i won't say versus like a maker's mark or wyoming <laughs> we do whiskey. it all the time and we they're like all the time. why did why did i pick a wyoming whiskey i was like well did you know there was this guy named steve now let me right, tell you a little right, right. little story right, yeah. about how that came to be yeah. um so I, I think it's it's really fun to teach people about the brands that are out there too and and the different types of and styles of weeded bourbon uh, but scott would say you know the best the best bourbon is is corn corn bourbon from high corn bourbon high corn oh, bourbon. for sure corn i like bourbon. it sweet yeah absolutely i like it sweet yeah. yeah no we do it all the time we always not always but most of our tastings we always put a name on there and just to kind of see where it ends up. And typically, it doesn't necessarily fare too well. <laughs> it doesn't. It's amazing. You know, and it it's, but it's the label. Love. I mean, they've earned the right to, you know, to get the label love. I mean, obviously, they've, yeah. they've done something right, whether it's marketing or at some point they were maybe the best whiskey in the business. And so, you know, there's just so much more stuff out there now, though. So when you start introducing people to some things that it's like, you know what, if you like this, why don't you try this? And then they like it better. It's it's kind of cool. Yeah. No, I, I think that's super interesting. And so we, we've talked a lot about, you know, the other parallel things, but you teased something to me prior to was like, there was two secrets at the beginning was your cocktail person and your food person. What are the other two secrets? Well, uh, yeah, the, the cocktail program for sure, my, getting Michael Crouch and our, our new GM for the first year, a little more, uh, you know, I, I, I'm I doing air quotes. I GM'd it. But, you know, there's a, just such a difference with Chris Blue. I mean, Chris has been – he's an industry guy. Uh, and so he was a game changer for us. He he could take them to where I couldn't. I mean, I was I was a pretty good GM at 30. In my 50s, I wasn't, I wasn't that good of a GM to be – I mean, I, you know, I, I knew the business. I knew what Josh and I's vision was, and I held very true to that line. I always have. But he could teach them server techniques. I've never been a server. Yeah. I, I don't know. I know the whiskey industry, but, you know, he was just uh, – he, or he not was, he is. He's He's been very good for us. Uh, to What he has done for us is – this is, this is kind of um, – the best point that I can make is he's allowed us to get out and be apologist for Watch Hill Proper and get out there and spread the word about yeah. Watch Hill Proper. That's what I'm better at. I'm better at leading tastings and getting out and walking downtown and handing out cards and shaking people's hand and saying, you need to come out and experience it. Because one of our biggest problem is that they're you know, I think we're, I'm not going to say we're better known out of the state of Kentucky, but we are probably, we're very uh, well known outside of the state of Kentucky and inside of the state of Kentucky and even the city of Louisville, still people don't have any idea who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'll go as far as to say, even in this community, this is kind of the Truman Show community, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, there's, there's people in he he said it not me. He said it, not me. <laughs> no, I love this community. I live in this community, so I I, 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 I literally called it the Stepford community. Yeah. Well, like Stepford Wives is right there with it for sure. <laughs> but there's people in that we're in that we actually sit in the North Village, which is being built as you can see. Uh, people in the South Village, you know, they may not have a clue that we're even here. So what it has allowed us to do, or especially me, I mean, Josh has got his hands full, uh, but it's allowed me to get out and just pass out cards and shake hands and say, "Come," because if I listen. If we can get them in here, we're pretty well going to get them. Well, and that's where I was going to go is I think (laughs) what it's allowed me to do is it's given me the confidence to say, I want you to come in and experience this because one of like the number one focus for Chris and like when we tasked him, when he took the job, all of our, we were very much on the same page was that it's all about the experience. Mm -hmm. Like when you come in, they have to be given the the best experience they've ever had. And whether it's their first time or their 10th time, you know, we have people traveling from all over the country just to come here. Some, you know, it's it's happening more and more. We're sure. getting tourists who pick Louisville as a destination because they see us, they see our Instagram, or they see see us 
somewhere on, on a show or in a magazine. And they're like, I have to go there. And so then they build a trip around coming here. And when they walk through the door, it has to be right, you know? And so Chris has made it so sure. And so now when I reach out to somebody to say, Hey, come and try it. I can do that with confidence. Yeah. There's no trepidation at all about saying that. Absolutely. That's a great point. Well, and I, I would, I would add, I was one of the people that thought it was a membership club only. I didn't think I was. <laughs> That's a cuss word. We I'm not worthy. <laughs> I know. Like literally like, you know, all of my friends, we have a lot of industry friends. They were like, Oh yeah, we're, we're members of watch Hill proper. And yeah. I'm like, awesome. Like, Throw your boy a bone. Like, when can I come? And yeah. you know, um, it falls solely on two on two sets of shoulders. Yeah, it's and, our. And shoulder. we're sitting right here. Well, yeah. and the, balls on us. And and so it's like one of those things. It's like you know, I was like, man, like I would, I'd love to go experience it. And so when when you know, going back to Five Trail, like in that dinner, like when they that happened, I was like, we gotta go. Never been. Didn't think I would be ever get a chance. And then I got here, and it's like. Yeah, we're not members. <laughs> I'm like, oh crap! Like I could have came here ages ago. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely pushed it pretty hard we at did. the beginning. Um, it was a big part of getting us off the ground, the membership aspect, because we needed you know some funds and some we needed some really some love. We needed people to say, hey, we're with you and we'll support you. And so we we needed that membership up front, but we really pushed it pretty hard, and so it gave the impression that we were members only club. Our membership is really more of like a frequent flyer kind of program really is what it boils down to. The more you come, the more you should become a member because you get discounts, you get, you know, first access, you get, you know, you get a relationship with our staff. There's just a lot of things that come with being a member, but if you only come once or twice a year, there's no reason to be a member. Just make a reservation and show up or, you know, on a Tuesday night, we're not on a wait on a Tuesday night yet. So, as as long as Keyword that yet. I, I like <laughs> that word yet. Yeah, because I plan I hope to be. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know, as of today, yeah. you can come out on a Tuesday night at six thirty and just walk in and get a seat. You don't even need a reservation. So um, you know, we still want our non members to come and experience. And of course we always going to be available to non members because like we talked about already, we have the out of town element. So people who are on vacation who are coming here as a tourist we always want to be accessible to them and give them an opportunity to come in and experience us. So we're always going to have that non-member element that always where you can get in, you know, whether or not you're a member. So there's nothing better. And this happened to me. It was here last Saturday for a big part of the evening. There's nothing better than having, um, you know, someone say we came from Nashville or, or from wherever and it exceeded what we thought that that's just too cool i mean when they get here you know their expectation is here and then uh if our staff and uh, have made it exceed their expectations that's just too cool and i hear that we touch a lot of tables josh and i if we're here uh we let you know it's so funny that people want to talk to us (laughs) i mean it's cool and i get it i get it owners and that type of thing but we we enjoy it we love doing that yeah, I try not to be here at night. <laughs> I just end up. You used to be here uh, quite a bit, but even still, like if I'm here on an evening at six thirty and I'm I'm trying to get work done and I I wander out onto the floor, there's literally you know I know dozens of people that are in the seats already because yeah. we have a lot of regulars and a lot of people and it's like I look down and it's like two hours <laughs> later and I'm like God I should not have come out here. you know no but we do enjoy getting to know you know Absolutely. everybody and our you know, our regulars are fun. It's the relationship part has been, I think kind of the, I don't know, the hidden gem. I don't, that's not the right word I was looking for, but it's been the unexpected kind of benefit of starting this to have built so many relationships oh, yeah. with all the people that come here on a regular basis. And for the people who do that and come in and sit next to, isn't that so-and-so? Yeah. You never know. But just the industry, like the industry relationships that we've built and then our member relationships. And, you know, we have non-members that come in that on a regular basis sure. too, that we've gotten to know. And so just, I have a whole bigger network of friends essentially yeah. that, was kind of an unexpected benefit. I didn't realize that this was, it's almost like the cheers, you know, the the old sitcom, the cheers, (laughs) like literally when we're standing in the front bar at five o'clock, me and you talking, 
people start coming in and it's just like, Hey, how you, you know, it's like sure. everybody that comes through the door, we, we know them. And that's, that's pretty cool. It's very cool. It's yeah. fun. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and we it's do like cheers without the beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cheers without the beer. That's, that's a tagline. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a shirt. You know that's what? Easy. That might be a shirt. Yeah. yeah. Hope I'll, you didn't I'll take, don't I'll, go home and copyright that. I'll, hey. take, I'll take the first shirt. <laughs> uh, bur- bur- the bourbon beer. lens would like a dollar per shirt. Yeah, royalty. Man, I like that. And I've been known to steal stuff. I told you about my, I'll have my, my lawyer. <laughs> I'll have my lawyer draft something up. Yeah, yeah. Scott's a lawyer by trade, so oh, luckily, no. luckily he's on retainer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. But no, we do. We enjoy the relationship part of it. We enjoy everybody coming in and supporting us. So it's been it's been really cool getting to know everybody. And I think kind of that segues a little bit into the industry part. Like Tommy mentioned it, but if you come in on a Thursday, Friday night. You, if you know who the people are in the industry, they're a lot of them are here, yeah. and it's kind of crazy. You walk in and you're like, "Wait a minute, that's so and so, and that's so and so," and and the, it's fun for the industry people too because you know the master distiller of such and such walks in and they see their buddy, you know, from this distillery, and then they yeah. get to kind of like have a have a moment. Yeah. So that's fun for them too. I think they really enjoy coming out. No doubt. And, Knowing that when they come out, they met, they're probably going to see people that they know. There's only a few few places for people like that where they can like go and and be a part of that um, community. It seems like, which it's it's great that they're here. And a lot of people don't realize, like, yeah, Bard's Town's where a lot of whiskey's made, but a lot of decisions are made in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> um, and so you know, like, while they may do a lot of work down there you know they're, they're here. trying to stake their claim as the bourbon capital of the world man hey yeah. they're, they're trying to fight it they're trying there's to. a lot of decisions that are made in these rooms too that's yeah. right hey, yeah you don't you don't know what's what the deal is behind you know when you sit down and have a cocktail with somebody mm-hmm. right you're gonna learn something or you're gonna you're gonna find out something you didn't know prior going oh that man conversation. we love that stuff too yeah yeah, yeah. We, love, we love hearing that you know the inside story on stuff yeah and so you talked about a tourist destination so have you seen not just um, you know, distilleries and distillers and, and industry people come in, but you know, like I'll say celebrities, I hate to be that guy, but like, you know, people, <laughs> people that like, you know, of, of stature in some way, you know, the, the lead doctors or, you know, basketball players or whatever, like stop in and be like, Hey, I, I've heard about this. I like bourbon. This is, or I like whiskey. This is where I want to come. Like, have you, have you all seen I that? I think kind it's of building. Uptick? I think yeah. it's getting there. We've had our share of celebrities, but not the big, you know, a listers that like Jeff Ruby's gets and such, yeah. but we're, Ain't we're nobody want to go Jeff Ruby's it's too loud in there. Yeah. yeah. But we're getting there. I mean, I do think, you know, we've had, we had some in last weekend or a couple weeks ago. We, and, did. we have a movie producer, a uh, director who was a member here. Oh, cool. uh, and so he had told us that there was uh, someone coming in. They wanted to talk some whiskey history and that type of thing. And, uh, so we were here and walked in. It was Jim Gaffigan, which yeah. was cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, saw, I saw that picture. Yeah, yeah it, it was fun. It, it was cool. So yeah. anytime they get to come in, it's cool. I think set, tomorrow is Saturday, the February Grand. 3rd. Uh, Graham McTavish, which I don't know. If I, he's he's one of those, you know, if you know his movies, you know I'm him. I'm a fan. He's, I'm a fan. Yeah, uh, but he's got a whiskey out. So that's why he's here because he's, you know, he's a celebrity brand. So those we do get those we do get celebrities that come in who have a brand that they're pushing and so that's fun and of course that's becoming a big thing now with the celebrities. I will tell you the one big miss of a celebrity is uh, Russ Smith is probably the most beloved University of Louisville basketball player, one of the most beloved. He had in his car. I know the I know for sure the first one was Steph Curry, mm-hmm. and I think the other one could have been I, I'm not going to even guess, but it was another high Dame. Was it Lillard? Yeah, I think it was Damian Lillard. He didn't. He forgot that we were closed on Monday and brought them here. They're pulling on the door. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that would have yeah. been fun. That would yeah. have been fun. So, been cool. but yeah, it's building. I mean, I think we would love to have obviously more because you know that's where people want to be. You know, when that's yeah. the thing. But we do have a great private room over here on the lounge yeah. where we can lock them in there and kind of give them some privacy. And so we kind of built that within mind, knowing that that might come to where we can put people in there that, that, you know, maybe 
want to have a little more privacy. There's just so. a little thing called Derby 150 coming up. I'm sure yeah. there'll be a few yeah. people in town. Yeah. They might look for a place to drink a whiskey. And PGA Championship. Yeah, PGA I was going to say, we're, we're trying to get a caddy, uh, caddy event dude. here for PGA. We think that'd be a blast. Like Hell We think yeah. just having caddies out here would be a yeah, blast. Be if I, the I, golfers I, come, great, but the caddies, yeah. just bring them <laughs> on true. out. That'd be well, great. And you know what? The caddies, are, the caddies tend to be pretty damn good golfers themselves. Yeah. So you can oh, get a few yeah. golf tips along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. My uh, my golf story is um, 2004, I think it was, uh, when the PGA was at Valhalla, mm-hmm. uh, Rocco Media rented my uncle's house nice. in Polo Fields. That's cool. Uh, and so he got to meet Rocco yeah. and his team and, and you know, all that. Um, and it was like, man, that's pretty damn cool. He's like, a character, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we're, I'm going, I got one, I got one day tickets to the PGA. I'm pumped. Can't yeah. wait. It Took should be a blast. Can't wait. It's a big deal for our city. And it's obviously as, I don't know if it's as big as Derby, but it's close. It's going to be a big deal. For it's us. back to it's like almost back to back weeks, like two yeah, weeks there. apart. Yeah, like it's it's, it's going to be a wild time. Like they're predicting the largest crowd ever for Derby because it's oh like, yeah for sure. The next the next big one would be two hundred, right? Yeah, yeah one seventy five, maybe. But two hundred, right? Yeah. Like yeah, like that's. That's it's going to be while. bonkers. Yeah. It's going to be it'll just, crazy. It'll be a drunken fest for about three weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah. 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 Of course, we World celebrate. Day, really not <laughs> happening. No. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see you see in Lexington and Keeneland and see, uh, see you at Churchill yeah. first week. And, it, and it's early this year. It's it's, it's May 4th. Yeah. 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 And Star Wars Day. May the 4th be go. with you. And Cinco de Mayo is the next day after. It's, it's cool. a big, big yeah. weekend. That's my daughter's birthday, Cinco de Mayo. Hey, yeah. party. It's, yeah. a, it's a big party. I was looking up the dates. Yeah, yeah it's going to be it's gonna be a fun fun summer for sure with yeah. all that kind of starting off. So it should hey, be big. Hey, and the little, the little big rat didn't see a shadow today or oh. whatever. Hey, Groundhog Day. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the little rat. I like it. That's what I would have called it, too. It rodent. Puck, that that <laughs> damn Puxatani. Uh, did not see a shadow? Is no, he did said? not. So that means early spring. It's early right? spring. Well, hey, you know what? I tell you what, we got coldish balls weather a couple weeks ago and now yeah. we are uh it's been 50 it's been degrees. nice it's been nice in the february. it sounds like bourbon drinking weather yeah is, is there ever not a bourbon drinking well weather? that too <laughs> yeah it, it's it's so fu- <laughs> it's so funny like we'll have we've had events and you know it can be 85 degrees outside and it's like yeah ice cube you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah ice cube we, we do bourbon slushies oh yeah we've got bourbon slushies oh there's nothing wrong with bourbon slushies now yeah yeah. Oh man. I just they, they just took me back to Jack Daniels when we drank uh, uh-huh. whiskey slushies on the Jack Daniels tour. Yeah. We yes. and it's funny. Jack Daniels has been really good to us too. Actually, we we've, we've embraced them and they've embraced us. And so we've got um, we did a barrel pick with them already. We've got a second one that we've got on order that we've already picked. And uh, we take members down there on a regular basis. It's, um, so fine. it's just a beautiful facility. Oh, it's, it is. It's and so I, fun. I, I saw the ten year up there uh, mm-hmm. on the on the front bar. The twelve year is also really good. Yeah, and I saw also the, the Tennessee tasters, yep. which are also we really have good. every They're Tennessee fantastic. taster that they've ever done. We've got the ten, the twelve year, Sinatra. Yeah, the um, straight the the single barrel barrel proof Jack is just some of the finest whiskey I've ever had. All right, so. I, I've told Sven this, so this is nothing I've not told the the team at Brown Foreman. But <laughs> single barrel barrel proof rye whiskey was a mouthful, and I, they should change that. But the whiskey itself, oh man, Excellent. phenomenal. Yes, like Agreed. absolutely. Like, I bought cases of it. If, if yeah. you're not paying attention to what Jack Daniels is doing, this is my Jack Daniels announcement. Like, but you might be a little late. Might be a little late because and and talking about getting into the single malt game. Yep. That. Twice they barreled did. single malt originally was really good, and the single malt that came out this year was also really good. Um, yeah. Well, and their their bonded series is really good. Oh yeah, with the triple, triple mash. mash yeah. yeah, and their original, and then that rye is really good too. Oh man, um, the, the the one that came out this year, the um, well, the heritage no, did you, the heritage no, rye? the one that's in that series. Um, the heritage bond. Oh, the bonded the bonded rye. The bonded rye. Yeah, yeah. But the heritage rye this year. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Like. Oh, the twice barreled, twice barreled in the in the Cooper's uh-huh. Craft barrels. Yeah, they're killing it. Wow. Now they're they're doing some craft stuff that's kind of interesting for a distillery of that size. Yeah. It's oh man, pretty amazing. But yes, this the single barrel barrel proof rye. It's hot as fire and it's right up my alley. It is so good. Because some of that stuff's one mid one thirty proof. Yeah, it's fantastic. Your esophagus starts screaming oh, at it's you. It's so stuff. good. It's just yeah. It was good. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's good. So that leads me into kind of the last question that I got for y'all. Um, 
and I'm not I'm not asking for the secret sauce because you all got to do a lot of things to get here um, to to make what you all have. But like building a bar, right? We've talked about it. Like, how do you build a bar? Like, what are you what are you looking for? Like, <laughs> but like from a, a size perspective, like where do you even start? Like yeah. when you were like, hey, we want to set out to be this. Like, how do you like go about like I I, I need this. Mm. I I want to make this. Like just. I don't need secrets. Yeah, no, just I get kind of, it. Kind of the idea. I had a big collection to start with, so that was kind of our our like initial, you know, push to have all that stuff there. You know, I think it starts out with kind of like what our our purpose was in the beginning. It was supposed to just be a tasting room. Um, they kind of had a membership aspect to it, so it's kind of that's why it's kind of morphed into this monster, but. You know, our original goal with all of it was just to kind of, you know, we were playing the game that everybody else is playing of trying to go and get those, you know, whiskeys that you've heard about that, that are on Instagram, that are everywhere that you can't get. They're not on store shelves. They're not accessible. It's a $40 bottle, but for some reason you can't ever get it, you know? And so we wanted to make those accessible to people. And so I had all of those in my collection and, and we felt like, you know, we could get them, you know, fairly regularly and try to make that work based on the vintage spirits law that, that came down a few years ago. So that was kind of the initial startup of the bottle collection. Um, I think I had, I don't know, 13, 1400 different bottles at the time. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. So I you had know, like, I had like 200 i don't know <laughs> like, no, like i nowhere, brought 10 bottles nowhere yeah. what he had so that Two was more. the yeah that was the initial that was the initial kind of idea behind it and so from there we've just kind of grown our collection um you know a lot of people will come to us and say hey i've got these to sell or whatever which that happens from time to time but mostly our collection's grown because you know believe it or not in two years the game right now for the distilleries is to put out a special release. That's the game. So whether it's, you know, something like a Booker's that comes out four times a year or an Elijah Craig barrel proof that comes out three times a year on a regular, that's a new expression every time that comes out. Now multiply that by all the distilleries out there. And very quickly, if you're getting one of every bottle that hits the market, it doesn't take long for your collection to expand and you don't even have to go into the vintage market. You know, yeah. you're just building a collection of all these special releases like the Jack Daniels and yeah. all that stuff. So these things hit, well, you just look at any given month of the year hmm. and all the releases that came out that month. We just like today, Heaven Hill 18 year 18, came out, yeah. the new Elijah Craig barrel proof came out and it's just every day. And so we have to, the game for us now is to stay on top of all of that, you know, and, you know, somebody in another state puts out a new, a new chocolate malt or something, you know, and it's like, well, I need to get one of those. And so we rely on our distributors a lot. Um, we would like them to do better, but I, I would like the, our distributors to just say, Hey, this is the new stuff we got in this week and send me one of all of those. You know what I mean? And like, make yeah. it life easy for us. Just send it to us. Yeah. yeah. So that we, you know, we want it. Yeah, that's right. We don't have to, you don't have to ask. Yeah. Just yeah. Send it. Just tell your distributors. I was reading up on bourbonlist.com <laughs> and I saw all these new things coming out. Well, yeah, we have to watch press releases. Oh we God. have to. And so that's the exhausting part of it. And not so much of like trying to get all these old bottles. It's just staying on top of the new ones is the big one. But, but kind of to your point, the, the vintage spirit law is what allows a bar like us to exist. And probably, 20 other bars in the city of Louisville yeah. to exist is because they can get that bottle through that vintage spirit law. And then those, those people who are coming in from these States that are state controlled that don't have access to that, they can come to Kentucky and whether or not they can buy a bottle might be one thing, but they for sure can taste one. Yeah, And that's the cool experience when you can come into a bar like ours or some of the other bars around town and you can, Get a Weller 107 if you've never had that before, or a Blanton's, or a Pappy, or whatever it is that you've never had, and you can say, "Hey, I checked that off my list. I've tasted it." And you know, you maybe you didn't have to spend two grand on a bottle 
to taste it, you spent, you know, 50 bucks on a pour and you checked it off your list and you were like, yeah, well, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and you realize that uh, you're going to pee that out later. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so. yeah, no, no, I think, I think that's, that's pretty cool. And, and to, to all the p- potential bar owners out there that are listening to this, <laughs> make sure you tag your vintage spirits correctly. Oh, uh, be, <laughs> be very smart about it. That's right. Diligent. Yeah. They, they're, Do your due diligence. Yeah, the stickers diligent. and all that kind of jazz. Um, you know, I don't think I think the ABC in Kentucky wants us to succeed. Yeah. You know, I don't think they're out to get anybody. It's just you need to not make it easy for them to. You know, you. to, to find something. You. Yeah, yeah. We, so we do your due bad diligence. Bad every rule and law. Yeah, pay your taxes. <laughs> All <laughs> those little things that keep everybody happy, and they're going to leave you alone. Yeah, yeah. You know. for sure. Well, no, I mean, I, I think this is uh, an awesome place, uh, <laughs> and now, now I got to come back on my own volition and pick up my own food and my own whiskeys, <laughs> uh, and in, and enjoy a, a thumb through the menu. Uh, yeah, I got to. I'm going to go through the menu. I got to see what, you know, $7 bourbons uh, that Scott wants to buy and uh, drink those with him. <laughs> <laughs> we have, I think on our menu, I, don't, I think I keep listing it. At the front of our menu, we have a list of like kind of cheesy statistics, but I think we have pours under $10 pours. I think, I don't know what our number is, it's, but it's in the hundreds. Yeah. We have hundreds and hundreds of pours that are $10 or less. And so you can come in here and you could literally drink for a year and taste something different and not spend more than 10 bucks. So that's fun. I think that's, you know, that makes it accessible. And then of course we do have the, you know, the $200 pours and whatnot for the the people that want to check those boxes. But you literally could taste for days on end of pours that are very affordable. Yeah. And that's the one thing we talked about beforehand. Like downtown Louisville is, is expensive. Um, as it should be. That's where a lot of people are traveling to. Bars got to stay alive and got to make their money. But like, if you're looking for a swath of whiskey at an affordable price, um, don't be don't be fooled by the high end mystique right. of the place. That's that's very true. We 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 have fought that battle, and um, you know we we'll put our menu up against anybody's. I mean, yeah. we just think for uh, pound for pound and, and for the value of what you get. You know, there might be some that are right there with us, but you know, don't. Don't assume that because we are in Norton Commons and, uh, you know, you see the, you know, you see this place that it's a $50 Blanton's pour. Yeah. yeah. It's just not. I think our Blanton's 12 bucks. I think our Blanton's are 12 bucks. 12, Antique bucks. is like 12. But STFB though, you're going to pay for a little bit. Uh, it's still in the twenties. I yeah. think. That's, I mean, but like, you know, but that's a good price. It's a fair price. $250 bottle. Yeah. Well, I think we're very fair. I think up yeah. and down the menu, I just think it's very fair. Of course, you're not going to, you know, the double Eagle, you're not going to come in here and get it for 20 bucks. <laughs> you're just yeah. not. I mean, it's just the way it is. Because, yeah. I mean, we know you what know it costs us. Yeah. Like that's $5,000. Yeah. Uh, uh, double it. Double yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I just, you know, one of those 25 year old Eagle rares. No, <laughs> we weren't fortunate enough to get an allocation we, we of that one. Get an allocation. Yeah. I don't know why that, it was, but, um, but yeah, so we, but it goes back to our mission, right? Our mission's always been to make bourbon accessible, to teach people about Kentucky bourbon, about our industry, to promote our industry. And so for us to be, you know, for us to have a, a 15, $16 makers pour doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's not accessible. And so that's, we're always going to be true to our mission, which is to keep things, you know, accessible. That's so. that's awesome. Well, Scott, you got anything else? No. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, we, we appreciate you all taking some time out of your all's day. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Bourbon Lens. Make sure you're connected with Scott and I via social media on Instagram, X, and Facebook. We'd love to connect. And if you're more the professional type, follow us over on LinkedIn. If you want to know more about Bourbon Lens, make sure you're subscribed to our weekly newsletter, The Weekly Pour. For exclusive content and more, check out Patreon. Follow us there at Bourbon Lens. And last but not least, on your favorite podcast listening app, make sure you're subscribed because every Monday, Scott and I release a podcast and we would love to have you here listening to the newest features and the newest whiskey news. And until next time, cheers.